I just got back a bunch of coins that I sent out to get graded by PCGS, some of which were featured in some prior videos. Stay tuned. Hey collectors, thanks for watching. I'm the Collector of Coins, and that's right, as I said in the intro, we just got back a bunch of coins that I sent out to get graded by PCGS. All right, we're gonna see how we did together. Let me put the camera down so I can cut this tape so we can open this box up. All right, we got the tape off. Let me get some of the packaging stuff out of the way. Now, some of the coins that I sent out, I said do not put in holders if they do not grade. Um, I sometimes feel that as a dealer, they present better in flips. Now I will note if they were cleaned and whatever comes back, just generally speaking, people tend to shy away, I think, from the slabbed um, body bag coins effectively. All right, now that being said, we're gonna go through one at a time and let's take a look at the first one. All right, really nice looking 1952 graded AU58. Um, I'm trying to remember if this was a coin roll fine. Let me let me take a look to confirm based on my notes. All right, so this was not a coin roll hunting find, uh, but this did come across my table. It was in a, a bag full of others. So I thought it was really nice looking. Um, I used basically my free uh, PCGS member uh, coupons to get every year. So the grading didn't cost me anything, just the shipping. Um, I thought this could have graded higher. I don't see any impairments on the field. I didn't pick up any wear. There must be some slight wear in the high point of the hair is what they're picking up. But here we go. An AU58 would not have been worth sending out to get graded at all. Um if it wasn't for the fact that I didn't pay money on this given the coupon. Um, and yeah, I did pay for shipping, but that's okay. Uh, collectors are working on half dollar sets that I that I know, and so someone may likely pick this up and this will not be a super expensive coin for them. All right, pretty nice, we'll put that aside. We'll take a look at the body bag coins later. Um, let's take a look at this next coin. It's another Franklin. Um, that's a beauty. Some impairments, it did get what I thought it was. I was hoping for the full bell line designation. Um, as you can see, you, uh, there are lines here. I guess PCGS did not deem them solid enough to go across. So that's a beautiful coin. Um, and I believe there might've been one more. Yeah, another 1963 MS64. Again, not super variable coins. Normally would not be worth sending out to get graded. Let's take a look at this next one. And there you go. This was featured in a video. I was really worried this did not get the re, uh, would get a re, uh, repunch mint mark designation. Um, I will pull out the video where I found this in. Here's my nickel uh, coin roll hunting mat, which you can get um, below there's a link, but here you go. Repunch mint mark 1964D. I will do a cut to that video shortly so you can see what it looked like when we came across this. I thought this was better than MS62. I thought this was close to MS64. I don't see the impairments at all that would demote this to a 62. Uh, but let's take a look at the value of this. That is awesome. Roll 42 gives us a really nice looking 1964 out of Denver, which has a D over D. I don't know if you can see it easily. Let me point it out. You can see a divot here and a divot here, and then a shadow behind. Looks like a D stamped over a D. Look at the condition. It's spectacular. I think I'm going to need to send this one out to PCGS. Repunched mint mark, 1964. Safe bet it's an MS64, and at MS64, it's worth $775. Well, as you can see, I was right about it being a repunched mint mark. I was wrong about the uh, D over D variety. This is a minor variety, and I was wrong with the grade. Now, I do think this is better than MS62. 
there are no imperfections on the main field. I do see some very small imperfections on Jefferson's face. Um, but I think this is much closer to a 64 than a 62. But PCGS are the experts, and I am not yet. Still working on my grading skills and getting better at it. All right, so a few of you said that this was not the FS501, which would be the 1964 D over D repunched mint mark. Um, this says minor variety. So I, I'm guessing PCGS agreed with some of the views that this was not the 501, but this is some other mint mark variety. It's interesting, the 501, um, which I guess was uh, is a more major variety. Let's take a look at the value of MS62. Let's see here, I'm looking up in PCGS's site. Um, it's a $145 coin. I'm not sure what to value this at, given that this is a minor variety. It's gotta be probably at least worth $100. But there you go, coin oil hunting find, uncirculated, repunch mint mark. All right, we're gonna take a look at the body bag coins in a minute, but really excited about this variety. All right, we're gonna take a look at the three coins that did not get slabbed due to the fact that they were um, either cleaned or damaged or whatever. We'll take a look in one moment. All right, here, here we go. Let's start with this half dollar. Really nice looking 1892. Let's cut to the video that um, featured this half dollar where I talked about it. Hang on, and then we'll come back. This one intrigues me. I'm gonna take it out of this flip. We're gonna look at it together carefully. Okay, we can get a better look at this bobber half. This is what, uh, be careful here. This is what I'm worried about on this one. Despite the phenomenal strike, that luster, I cannot tell if it's been cleaned or if it's original. I'd love to believe that it is uh, original. I mean, look at the details. The toning is really cool. I'm gonna put this both first underneath my loop to study it more. I'll put it underneath the microscope as well. Microscopes are not great for grading, but they are great for looking for errors, varieties, as well as to look for potential signs of cleaning. And what I would be looking for would be swirl marks or micro scratches that interrupt the natural luster of the coin. This is toned on the reverse. It's toned on the obverse, but that looks like it's polished. Leave a comment. Let me know what you think. So here's the reverse underneath the microscope so that you guys can see it. Put it back underneath. It looks like there's dirt or particles around the devices, which to me would mean it probably was in circulation. This might be closer to AU. I mean, look at the, um, sorry for the angle. Look at the little elements on the field there. And then if I, turn it over to the obverse. I think I had seen some micro scratches in somewhat of a circular motion. You can see them over here. I mean, you get some amazing color and toning on this coin. Don't get me wrong, this coin is absolutely beautiful. But the debate is proof coin or cleaned. And I'm leaning towards cleaned, but I'm not confident and I am tempted to roll the dice to get this certified by PCGS to see if they deem it as cleaned or a proof coin. I'm leaning towards AU53 cleaned or proof 53. Yeah, uh, this is a tough one. So if this is not a proof coin, if this is a business strike coin, it's relatively low mintage, 934,000, and could be could be worth a bit. Um, I think I'm gonna take a chance on it and send it out. You can all yell at me in the comments if you think I'm making a big mistake. All right, this will go off to PCGS in my next batch. I am prepared that this will come back AU55 or AU53 cleaned. Um, 
may it's worth the uh, I think it's worth the risk. All right. Well, I took a chance on it and indeed it is cleaned. So I feel good that I was able to identify a clean coin and I think it was fine taking a chance on it. Um, it's a great looking coin. Again, this didn't cost me anything other than the shipping because I paid, um, well, I used my uh, free coupon on it. And when I purchased this uh, from the collection, uh, the designation that said proof uh, did come from the seller uh, with a question mark. Um, I didn't pay a lot for this, so I will put this in a two by two. I will mark it genuine uh, with details. Beautiful coin worth a few hundred dollars. And there we go, an 1892 Barber Half, beautiful coin, AU details. I will be selling this hopefully for around $320. All right, well, the last two coins are unfortunate. This is a 1964 um, silver quarter damaged wheel mark and didn't detect it. And I come across a lot of coins with the ring of death and I, I still don't see it. I'm gonna study that more for my own education. And then this one, I thought this was a really interesting 1949 Barber Half. Environmental damage, wow. So this was probably improperly stored. And so these two are just gonna be treated as constitutional silver, they'll go in my silver pile, and hopefully someone will adopt them. Well, collectors, I hope you enjoyed this video. Um, good luck with your submissions, and as always, happy collecting.